Hi everyone, Nick Russo here, and welcome back to the BGP multi-homing series. One of the simplest ways to overcome route reflectors hiding topology in MPLS VPN environments is to use a unique route distinguisher or RD. This isn't an MPLS VPN training course, but in summary, we have added multi-tenancy to our environment by placing R1 and R6 into a customer VRF named CUST A. Each VRF has an RD, which is prepended to customer routes to keep them unique on each PE. Within a VPN, designers can use the same RD or a unique RD on each PE, and we'll briefly examine both techniques. We'll throw in some unequal cost load sharing using the DMZ link bandwidth feature just for fun. When R4 and R5 receive R6's IPv4 loopback from R6, they choose it as their best path as there are no policies applied. Each route has a different RD, making the routes look different. Since BGP VPN routing entries are indexed by RD, the routes are in different BGP tables and thus cannot be compared directly. R7 selects both paths as best and advertises them to R2. Assuming we've configured our DMZ link bandwidth communities correctly, R2 will install both paths for ratio-based load sharing. Using a unique RD was the original multi-homing method before additional paths and the shadow techniques were invented, and it's still very popular today. Before we jump into the demo, you should know about my Cisco Advanced Routing courses at Pluralsight. Rather than teach various topics in isolation, I developed unique, large-scale topologies to illustrate how the technologies interact. If you need to brush up on your routing protocols, tunneling techniques, or management services, click the link in the video description to get started. Now, on to the demo. Before we review the unique RD setup, let's explore the network using the same RD on all PEs. This helps illustrate the problem that unique RDs can solve. Using the handy show run VRF cust A command, we can display all the configuration items relating to the customer VRF. At the top, we have the VRF definition along with the RD of 65002, which is currently configured on all PEs. A single route target is imported and exported on every device, providing any-to-any -any connectivity between all customer sites. The VRF is also enabled for IPv4 and IPv6, providing dual stack support. The PE to CE interface is placed in the VRF, which is a separate routing instance for customer routes. The IP addressing remains the same. Under BGP, we activate the PE to CE sessions from R2 to R1 in each address family and within the context of the VRF. The same general process occurs on R4 and R5 for their PECE connections to R6 as well. IBGP Multipath is enabled for up to two paths, allowing us to leverage the DMZ link bandwidth communities later. There's more to the BGP configuration, so let's review the important parts. The session template remains unchanged, and R2 still only peers to R7, the route reflector. This time, we aren't activating regular IPv4 or IPv6, but rather the VPNv4 and VPNv6 address families. This enables R2 to send VRF learned routes to R7 via the global table for MPLS transport, binding an MPLS label to each prefix. When we perform this technique between IPv4 peers for IPv6 VPN support, we call this 6VPE instead of 6PE. Note that DMZ link bandwidth processing is also enabled for these address families per our design requirements. Let's head to R7 to review its VPN v4 BGP table. I've displayed all VPN v4 routes on R7, where all the paths have an RD of 65002. We see R1's loopback with a next hop of R2, and two paths to R6's loopback with next hops of R4 and R5. Let's dig into 192.0.2.6/32 to explore deeper. Let's include the RD in the show command to be as specific as possible. We see two routes, one from R4 and one from R5, which are equally good. R7 chooses R4 as best due to having a lower BGP router ID, but that's nothing new. 
Because these routes have the same RD, the route reflector compares them directly. This is undesirable since only the best path is advertised towards R2. Each route has a different BGP label assigned, which are allocated by the advertising PEs. Each route also has the proper link bandwidth values, implying that our egress PE configuration is correct. Let's head back to R2 to see which routes it learned. As expected, R2 only learns about the path via R4 because the route reflector didn't notify R2 about the alternate path. This occurred because both paths used the same RD and were therefore directly comparable on R7. I'll quickly change the RDs to be different on all PEs and fast forward through it. We're on R7 now, and I've displayed all VPN v4 routes received by the route reflector. R7 receives three paths just like last time, except each one has a unique RD. All three routes are marked as best because each of them is kept separate for the purpose of best path selection. Now, let's head to R2 to ensure it received both paths to R6's loopback. This BGP entry is very long, but we now see two VPN v4 routes towards 192.0.2.6/32. Notice that iBGP multipath is enabled for two paths as well. Both of these paths were received by R7, the route reflector, with almost identical BGP attributes. The next hops are different, enabling R2 to use both R4 and R5 when routing towards R6. Notice the imported path from statement on each route. This identifies the original VPN route with a unique RD that was imported into R2's local customer VRF. The MPLS labels, route targets, and DMZ link bandwidths all look correct. Let's check the internal fib details to prove that unequal cost multipath is working. I'll begin the output at the word buckets. Scrolling up, the router is using 15 hash buckets to select between R4 and R5. Since our desired ratio is 2 to 1, then 10 buckets should map to R4 and 5 should map to R5. In the beginning, the hash buckets alternate between R4 and R5 as evidenced by the remote label alternating between the 4000 or 5000 series. Towards the bottom, all the buckets go towards R4, and if you were to count every bucket individually, you'd see a ratio of 10 to 5, which reduces as 2 to 1.